Hi guys, and welcome back to another Madden 19 rebuild. Um, we're going to call it a rebuild, but to be honest, there's not going to be much rebuilding that needs to be done since the Chargers are an absolutely phenomenal team, as you can see here. They start off probably one of the best bases for a team you're going to get out of any NFL team. Skill position-wise, they are absolutely fantastic. It's just the O-line that will need upgrading, and even that isn't terrible. They've got a few guys in there who are you know, reasonably young who can improve. But the skill positions, I mean, Hunter Henry, fantastic. Um, we've got Keenan Allen, Melvin Gordon, every, pretty much all the skill positions are just amazing. And Philip Rivers, even though he is getting on in age a little bit, he's still a fantastic quarterback in this game. So it's definitely going to be probably one of the easier ones. I mean, we should get playoffs in pretty much every year um, we're going through this. I just can't see us not getting playoffs in... Or, or if we're going to get we're going to get playoffs in, if we do four years probably three out of the four years we'll get playoffs but on defense they also look fantastic i've moved a few players around sort of i'll swap sides with a few players just to get scheme fits but joey bosa uh probably one of the best dns you can get just because of his age and because he has i think star or superstar development we've got derwin james who's going to be up to a 99 within one or two seasons because that happens absolutely every time he gets defensive player of the year a fair amount and he, uh, he has that superstar development, and he's 84 overall as a rookie. So if you ever, you know, can actually get the opportunity to trade for him, definitely take it, because he is absolutely unbelievable when it comes to franchise mode in Madden. But the team, anyway, as I was saying, it looks it looks fantastic. We've sort of got a surplus of good players when it comes to the secondary. So I think what I'm going to do, since we have four starting caliber cornerbacks, to be perfectly honest, I think I'm going to move Desmond King to safety, just because... Um, our other safety besides Derwin James is just aging a little bit so Desmond King he's only 23 years old he's already up to an 87 as a free safety so that makes our secondary just look that little bit better as cornerbacks I mean we've got Casey Hayward Jason Verrett and, uh, and Trevor Williams there he tends to go to free agency a lot when you're not controlling the charges I think I'm going to keep him just as a really good slot corner and that'll pretty much be the, the team I mean the hardest thing with this team is just going to be keeping keeping us under the cap limit because we got, we're going to have so many good players. I mean, we already have a very good starting base, but let's jump into some trades. So first trade here, I think what I'm going to do is just rack up some draft picks because the starting team is already fantastic. We're going to get rid of Colkin and Barksdale for the Bills first rounder. And another easy trade here with the Lions. If you give the Lions any middle linebacker and tight ends, they'll pretty much give up their first round draft picks for nothing. I mean, a 67 middle linebacker and two aging tight ends. So Kenny Clark... One of the best defensive tackles you can go for when it comes to franchise, and we got him for practically nothing. We're going to just get Okung, get rid of him for Petonio, upgrading us eight overalls and getting four years younger. A trade I've, I think I've done before, actually. We're going to get Austin Blythe in for um, Phelan and Jones. I'm going to trade with the Rams. And potentially the final trade we're going to do here is Meebane and a fifth for a first rounder from the Packers. I think it's the Packers one, but I'm not sure because they have two. And this is going to be the final line. I don't think we actually got any other starting players in. I think we literally just traded for draft picks. Um, and actually we've got Kenny Clark in, who's going to be, you know, a staple at defensive tackle. And that makes our D-line probably the best in the league. I mean, our linebacker core is fairly weak, but our D-line should more than make up for that, as well as our secondary. So I'm pretty confident this team's going to make playoffs. I can see us sort of going 10-6, and 11-5 and five in the first year. We'll have to see. Um, Sim does do some weird things sometimes. I think the main goal of this series would just be to get Philip Rivers a ring. Um, but yeah, let's jump to mid-season and see where we are. So going into mid-season, our record is 6-1. I mean, that's pretty much expected with a team like this. It's, like I said, it's not really a rebuild as such. It's more just a keeping the team going and keeping under the salary cap type um type rebuild I suppose. We're top of the division. I mean, we're actually in a fairly tough division. The Chiefs tend to do very well. The Broncos can surprise people quite a bit but the Raiders are a weird one because they sometimes perform really well even though their overalls are terrible and then sometimes they literally just tank which they should consider in their overalls. But this year we don't have too many signings to actually make. Jason Brett we're going to keep. I didn't actually realise he was 27 years old. But I mean you know he's, he's a great number two corner. We actually have a lot of cap room so I know saying, you know, cap is going to be the hardest thing, but since we have Philip Rivers, we'll probably be able to sign him on a cheap one-year, two-year deal. 
so we might be able to keep under the cap hit that way fairly easily. But we're going to get Tyrell Williams back in. He's a very good um, number two receiver for us, actually. I think we potentially might draft a receiver, but for now he's a good number two. And we've got Trevor Williams, who's actually got quick development still. He's 82 in the slot, so you know he's perfect for us there. And we'll sign him back, because he's only 24 years old. We'll sign him back for six years. Um, Adrian Phillips, if he'll take a cheap deal as a backup, I mean, we'll keep him just because backups actually do get on the field a fair amount of time. If not, you know, there's plenty of better options. Um, I, I mean, we, I might up the, the offer a little bit, but for now I'll just leave him out. And then Donnie Jones, we can just get another punter in free agency, so I won't go with him. I didn't actually realise Denzel Perryman was here. So he's 25, we'll give him a cheap five year. Considering we're running a 4-3, he'll be a good backup, as I said, or potentially, depending on what draft options are there. He's an okay starter. I mean, he's not great, but he is okay. Uh, Jalen Watkins, we can actually get him as our backup safety. So I might look at that, considering he'll be a cheaper option. But now that we've resigned everyone, we'll sim to the end of the year. Hopefully we make playoffs. So going into the playoffs, we should be there, and we are. 10-6, and six. didn't have a great second half of the season. We went 4-5, and five, and somehow... The Bills have made it to the playoffs. I absolutely no idea how. Their team is probably one of, if not the worst overall team you can actually use in franchise mode. But this is how our team's looking. Philip Rivers had a fairly decent year. Um, you know, 4,500 ish yards. 26 touchdowns to 10 picks isn't too good, but the yards are very good, as is completion percentage. So I'll take that. I'm guessing a lot of our offense was Melvin Gordon. Which, you know, 1,200 yards isn't too bad. Him and Austin Eckler, one of the best running back tandems in the league. And they got 20 touchdowns between them. And a hell of a lot of broken tackles. So that's pretty good. Keenan Allen with 1,337 yards. Tyrell Williams, Hunter Henry doing decently. And then Travis Benjamin there getting nearly 1,000 yards as well. So great season from the receivers all round. Blocking wise, you know, did okay there. Joe Petoni, I would have expected him to do a little bit better. Giving up 22 tacks from the left, uh, sacks from the left, left side of the line isn't the best thing in the world. A lot of tackles from Denzel Perryman, so re-signing him probably was the right option. Tackles for loss. Kenny Clark leading the team with Melvin Ingram. Pretty much, you know, there's a lot of tackles for loss between the team. Um, I think that was Trevor Williams with 10 there or something. Sacks. Not too great, but for some reason, I think they've sort of nerfed the sacks or something. In, um, in franchise mode because you tend to get less than you did before you sort of see saw people get in you know double digits way more often than they do now but overall defensively we seem to be pretty good uh, did we get any defensive touchdowns or safeties we just got three safeties that's pretty rare um, no defensive touchdowns but anyway team you know fourth in the offense overall in the NFL that's pretty good did we get any awards? I can't imagine we will get any awards, to be honest. We're not going to get the MVP. We're sort of very... The nearly their team, I think, this year. Um, Philip Rivers coming in at eighth. I mean, if Melvin, Melvin Ingram wasn't there, we're not going to get anything. Uh, defensively, Denzel Perryman actually comes in fourth. I didn't expect him to do that well. I mean, he had an okay year, but I didn't think it was a fantastic year. It was a fair amount of tackles, but offensive rookie of the year tends to either be a Browns or a Broncos, just... Because they have so many good um, good draft picks in there. And defensive Rookie of the Year, we just miss out with Derwin James. Darius Leonard gets it. Denzel Ward. There's a lot of very good defensive rookies this year, actually. Especially on the AFC side. So winning that, fair play to Darius Leonard for that one. He's someone who I actually, you know, I think he's, he's an incredible player. So I'm quite looking forward to doing the Colts. And we can have a defensive team based around him. But so far, you know... No awards. We've got a lot of people sort of in the top 10. So maybe next year we can just get that final push just to get over the hump, maybe, and get more awards. But, you know, we'll jump into the first playoff game. I can imagine we're going to be a lot higher rated than the Bills. Um, let's check that out. So we're 13 overalls higher. So in theory, this should be an easy win. So jumping into the game, we're just going to sim through most of it. It seems like we scored literally instantly. Didn't get the... Um, the the extra point, which is a bit frustrating, but we're 13 nothing up. We seem to be shutting them out. No idea how they actually made the playoffs. I mean, a, a 73 overall, you shouldn't be beating anyone, let alone nine other teams. But that's just the way the sim works sometimes. Thankfully, you know, they aren't using that voodoo magic on us. We're up 23 to nothing. We're pushing down the field yet again. 
Should make it 30 to nothing by the looks of it. Looks like we're going to punch it in, and we do. So this might be the most one-sided playoff game you're ever going to see. I mean, we're literally shutting them out. They get, they get seven right at the end. Doesn't mean anything. 30 to seven, very comfortable win. Happy with that one because you know anything can happen when it comes to the playoffs. I mean, the Bills managed to get there, but at least you know we're getting through the playoffs with this team. So we're against the Jags this time. Overall wise, going to be a lot more even. We're only one higher. Let's get it. So going against the Jags, they have they tend to be a very very good sim team. But we're seven nothing up. We're looking to drive down the field again. I think we went for a fourth down there. Look like but anyway, we're up 14 to nothing. Make that 14 to seven. But I st you know I, I think we can win this one. We're in the red zone again. 21 to seven. Looks like it's going to be a convincing victory for the Chargers. And as I said that they make it 21 21. But we are driving down the field. So. You know, I just I just want us to get to a Super Bowl with this team. Just give Philip Rivers that chance to win a Super Bowl. Um, I think we potentially do four years with this team. Just seeing how it goes. Looks like, you know, we're dominating this game. It's 31. Actually, we're not dominating it. Very close at the end there. We ended up winning it by a field goal. Thankfully, we didn't miss the field goal. That's something I'm um, going to have to look into because we seem to be losing a lot of playoff games in our other rebuilds due to missed field goals. But Philip Rivers... Very good game there. Three touchdowns to only one interception. Melvin Gordon, great running game. TJ Yeldon and Leonard Fournette. They got literally less yards than Melvin Gordon did by himself. Receiving, you know, we did all right. Did we get many sacks? We actually got three sacks on the day. Yeah, three. Joey Bosa, Ingram. You know, that's a that's pretty good. I'll take that considering Jags are probably the hardest team to win against in Sim. Them or the Rams. So let's go on to the next, uh, next round. See who we're up against. And we're against the Chiefs. Division rivalry for the AFC title. They're actually one overall higher than us. So, they're an overall higher. So, it's going to be a very close game. I mean, last game we literally won by three points when we were one overall higher. We smashed the Bills by 23 points, you know, when we were 13 points higher. So, in theory, this should be an insanely close game. Probably decided on a field goal. And it looks like it's... I mean, it was a defensive shutout until that point, so it was three to nothing. But now it's ten to nothing. We've got to at least get something this half. Otherwise, I can't see us making a comeback if we haven't scored anything. Coming to the third quarter, it really is a defensive game. Seventeen to nothing, twenty to nothing. We just cannot get things moving against the Chiefs. Seven to twenty. Can we punch it in? Okay, this gives us a chance. Twenty to fourteen. They've punted. It's going to be a close one. It's we're literally in the red zone. We need this fourth down gonna let him go for it and we don't get it that's disappointing we're nearly there let's go to the draft so the draft we do need a new a new middle linebacker jason overstreet looks fantastic he's top at pretty much everything when it comes to middle linebackers and he's an 80 overall but he does have normal dev i mean that's a little bit disappointing but 80 overall is very good he's gonna be a starter for us hopefully you know we can get that development trait up and our next pick i know we have a lot of corners already but Haynes McCoo, we can get him in, and I think Casey Haywood is going to be regressing soon, so he might be on his way out, and Haynes can be a good second or third corner for us. And probably the final, I think this will be our final pick in the first round, Joe Reinhardt looks pretty good. He doesn't look as good as, uh, as the other middle linebacker we drafted, but I mean, he'll be a good backup, or we can move him outside, and he's got quick dev, one of the guys will move outside. So our draft recap. You know, the team's looking decent. We actually did draft, uh, did have another pick in the first round. We got Compton, who was an outside backer, who looks fantastic. Overstreet looks very good. He's not quite a scheme fit, which, you know, will, defect his, will affect his development. But I still think, you know, he's going to be very good for the team. Ryan Hart looks good there. Compton and McCoo both look good. Overall, a very good draft. As you can see, we drafted mid-70s and up in the first three rounds. So they're all going to be potential starters, which is sort of all you can ask for when it comes to the first three rounds. But overall, the draft, you know... I haven't seen many drafts lately where there's been those incredible players, sort of the 84s, the 85 overalls. I don't know if they've um, they've changed something with the title update when it comes to that. If you know anything about that, let me know down in the comments, just because I don't know if I should be expecting that or um, or not. But a lot of people are also doing um, realistic style rebuilds. So if you want me to get into that, also let me know down in the comments about that. So going into t to year two. Our team, it looks pretty good. I mean, we got better starting linebackers now. Ryan Hart, we're probably going to move outside. Um, we did get Zadarius Smith in free agency. I always tend to sign him, and then I always end up drafting a linebacker who's 
just as good, if not better than him, you know, with better development opportunities. So he ends up being a backup or we end up trading him. But it does always tend to, you know, it's a decent signing. He'll be, you know, he's a very, very good backup and you can get him fairly cheap because no one puts an offer in for him sometimes, which is really strange. But overall, defensive line, fantastic. Linebacker core now, pretty good. Secondary, phenomenal. So I might do a few trades and then we'll sort of start going when it comes to the second year. So we're going to get Will Hernandez. Will Hernandez. We're going to trade Pouncey and Nape for him and probably move him to centre. Um, potentially the final trade, Nawusu, and we're going to get rid of Casey Hayward because we drafted a corner and we're going to get Kevin Byard in. Fantastic trade. So what I, what I actually did is with Kevin Byard at free safety, we could move Desmond King down to corner. He is an 89 overall safety, so you know he's definitely one of the best safeties in the league. We can move him down to corner, and he'll also be one of the best corners in the league. So him, Jason Verrett, and Trevor Williams, or our new drafted corner, make one of the best cornerback, you know, quadruplets, I suppose, in the league. We're going to put Desmond King as number one, Jason Verrett as number two, and probably Trevor Williams as number three. But as you can see, the team is looking fantastic. We're up to an 88 overall. Defensively, we should be one of the best in the league, and offensively, we should be very explosive. So let's go to the mid-season, see who we have to re-sign, and see what the record is. So, going into the mid-season, we're four and three. We're not as good as last year. I, th I actually thought we'd be better, considering our overall is better. Our offensive line did get a little bit weaker with Pouncey leaving, but I didn't think that would make too much of an impact. Defensively, I thought, you know, We'll be doing a lot better. But 4-3, and three, we're still top of the division, luckily. It's a very close division. Um, let's see who we have to re-sign. I did see Kenny Clark there, and he usually tends to want a hell of a lot. Kevin Byard as well. I forgot it was uh, going to be a contract year for him. He wants quite a lot. I think we'll lower that into the 6s. If we can get it to the 5s, we'll get it there. But we'll sort of around the 6, 6 mil a year. Yeah, he'll take that. Fantastic. He's one of the best free safeties in the league. Young, a lot of room to develop. So 2-3 years down the line, he could be a 99. Same with... Uh, with Kenny Clark here. He's only 23, which is ridiculous. Um, I can't believe he's actually that young, considering how good he is. I mean, he, he will want a bit more money. He does want 84 million over six. That is a lot. That's more than Bosa wants, actually, which is really surprising. Um, Joey Bosa, we're going to have to get him back. So all these high-tier guys, we're going to get back. We have a lot of cap room. I'm not sure how we have that much cap room. I mean, I think they must uh, have a lot of people on rookie deals at the moment. We seem to have a lot of re-signings, so that is probably where it's coming from. Melvin Gordon, we're going to get him back. We're going to lowball him, and if if we can't get him back, I can't imagine he'll accept this. We might increase the money, or we might end up tagging him just for the year and seeing how he does next year, because he's down to quick dev. You know, getting a star running back in, they'll develop quickly. I'll think about that. But Hunter Henry, definitely want to keep him. He's one of the best tight ends you can have. In, um, in simulation. Austin Blythe as well, we need to keep him. And that was Austin Eckler there. So it's a lot of re-signings. I mean, we have the cap room because we're actually lowballing all these guys. Um, saying that, he didn't sign. Austin Eckler, I mean, I know Melvin Gordon didn't didn't accept. Austin Eckler could be starting calibre running back. I don't think he's quite good enough for that. But Ugh. It's a tricky one. Uh, there's Jatavis Brown as well. Like, Jesus, there's a lot of signings this year, but luckily we have the cap room. I think Philip Rivers, we might might give him a one year. If he doesn't take that, we might re-sign him in free agency. You know, we'll see. And Travis Benjamin, we'll get him back as well. Why not? So, going into the end of the year, do we make playoffs? We do at 11-5. and five. So, two for two when it comes to playoffs. I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, I do want to win some Super Bowls, but just getting to the playoffs seems to be insanely difficult. But I think... You know, I mean, obviously with this team, this is one of the best chances we're going to get when it comes to getting consistently into playoff contention. But we did actually swap Philip Rivers for Carroll Towns because, you know, the, the midway point, we're only four and three. I thought we could do better. And Carroll Towns performed phenomenally there. It was 20 touchdowns to only two picks. Melvin Gordon, with another, it's a good year, but I'd expect him to do a little bit better. Keenan Allen with a great year. Hunter Henry with a great year. But Travis Benjamin... 13 touchdowns and over a thousand yards. I mean, that's a ridiculously good year. So, I can't remember if I actually re-signed him or not, but it looks like I definitely should re-sign him, considering that is a phenomenal... 13 touchdowns and over a thousand yards. That's probably a Pro Bowl for him. Kevin Byard led the team in tackles. 
nearly got 100. Uh, tackles for loss. Only three guys with double digits this year. But it seems like we got a few more sacks. Hopefully we did. Joe Bosa got nine and a half. I mean, that's a decent year sack-wise. It's not phenomenal. Picks, Kevin By with two. A lot of guys with one. So, defensively, I can imagine... I can imagine looking at those stats. Defensively, we were either really, really good and we were getting them out on three and outs a lot. Or we were just giving up massive plays all the time. So we'll have to check and see where we rank defensively. But let's look at awards quickly, because I can imagine we did get a few this year. Unfortunately, I kind of... Yeah, we're not in the MVP race. Uh, any AFC Offensive Player of the Year? I mean, against Blake Bortles, you stand no chance of winning. Defensive Player of the Year was Ryan Shazier. We didn't actually get anyone in there either. I thought we were going to have... I thought we were going to have some offensive rookie of the year or defensive rookie of the years in there. Unfortunately, we don't. Defensive or defensive, we don't actually. Reinhardt comes in second. Very disappointing. We got second in. Well, actually, we got third and second. It seems like no awards yet again. Travis Benjamin could have potentially got one there. Joel Batonio gets in there. So we're once again on the board. We're moving up a little bit. We're sort of around the fifth mark in a lot of these things, but just, just not. It seems like I don't know. We're just slightly underperforming. Saying that, we could still reach the Super Bowl. I mean, we are in the playoffs, so we'll have to wait and see how we do there. Um, not sure sort of where to go with this team. I can't see any holes on the team. Like, let me know... Let me know what you would do, actually, when it comes to this point. Um, as to who, what positions you'd change. Would you change the scheme to maybe make us play a little bit better? I don't know if a base 4-3 is the best way, you know, to make this team work. Maybe moving to a 3-4 might be a bit better. But, se I mean, the secondary isn't a problem. The front seven looks like it shouldn't be a problem. But they seem to be sort of underperforming a little bit. But our secondary, we have super staff safeties. Our corners are fantastic. We have a lot of upgrade points on a few players. Joe Reinhardt, even though he had a great year, came as second in Rookie of the Year, only gets one point. Bit unfortunate, but overall, you know, the team's definitely on the up. So going into the playoffs, a few little upgrades in there. I mean, we're definitely due a Super Bowl win. So let's go against the Bengals. Their overall is an 81 win, 90. And, I mean, nine overall difference. We should beat this team fairly comfortably. Looks like, you know, we're driving down the field pretty easily. 7 to nothing. We stop them. I thought, you know, we, we were going to score on that drive. Unfortunately, we didn't. So it's 7 to 3. And going... Into the halfway, are we going to keep the lead? We are. It's 7-6. to six. We've got the ball. Actually, we're not. We actually turned the ball over, and they've got three field goals. So it looks like our red zone defense is very good. But our offense just can't get clicking. As soon as I say that, we actually end up going up 21-9. to nine. So it looks like, you know, we're a second-half team. We managed to bring that back a little bit. 21-16. to 16. We did give them a chance to win the game, but... You know, fortunately, as the way the sim works, they run the clock out. So, let's move into the next game and see who we're up against. So, we're against the Steelers this time. This is going to be a tough one in the snow. I can imagine us losing this one. I wouldn't be too disappointed if we lose to the Steelers. I mean, obviously, I want to get to the Super Bowl. But if you're going to lose to a team like the Steelers, it's, un it's, it's acceptable. And it looks like we are going to, because we're down 20 to nothing. It seems like we cannot score in the first half. Um, we do score quickly when in the second half. Two quick touchdowns to make it a fairly even game again. And as I say that, we go down two scores. And we're already into the fourth quarter. You know, there is a chance for a comeback. It's a field goal. They're going to take the field goal. Quite surprising. Uh, the Steelers are actually going to take the field goal as well. It's a one-possession game, though. And it looks like they give us a chance to pull it back. And 14 seconds left. We're in the red zone. And we managed to get it. Goes into overtime, we win the coin flip, we're driving down the field, and we somehow managed to win the game. That was a phenomenal turnaround at the end. Well done to the Chargers, boys. Let's get into the next round of the playoffs. So, this is the FC Championship game, I think, and we're against the Jags. And we go up nice and early with a 7-0 lead. Looks like we're driving down the field again, and we make it a 14-0 lead. Very surprising we're beating the Jags this handily, and as, as you know, commentator's curse would have it, 14 to 7 they score as soon as I say it and once again hard to keep up when it is this fast but we are winning the game you know 28 to 7 
that is ridiculous considering how good the jacks tend to be in sim and their main strength is their defense um you know they can they can run games out fairly easily with Lender Fournette when they have the lead and their defense is that good but when you're playing a team as explosive as us on offense apparently it won't happen because we're up 34 to 23 looks like it's game over and we win 37 to 23 that was probably our easiest win of the playoffs against potentially the hardest opponent we could have had I mean the Steelers definitely made it close for us we were we were, I mean, we're out of the playoffs, if not for the last 14 seconds of the game. And this game, it looks like we performed really well, especially Melvin Gordon. So maybe he's fighting for that contract, really fighting to get into the Super Bowl. D.D. Westbrook is also like an 80, no, not an 80, sorry, a 95 overall. Not exactly sure how. But, you know, I guess he must have won some awards or something. But he's, he's better than Keenan Allen, which is absolutely ridiculous. But let's jump into the Super Bowl, see who we're up against. Hopefully it's someone easy and we can win. So, it's the Giants. And their, I mean, their overall can't be that high considering... I mean, they're not going to make many trades. So, I can imagine they're sort of mid-80s. They're actually 80. I mean, this should be an easy win against an 80 overall team. Let's see how we do. And as soon as I say that, it's 7 apiece. I'm not, I mean, I think we scored really early on and they just got a quick comeback touchdown. Well, we've taken the lead there, 10 to 7. This, like I said, we're we're 10 overalls higher, so we should win unless everyone on their team plays out of their skin, which it seems like they're doing. It's a very very close game. Super Bowls are never easy, and we if we know anything about the Giants, it's when they've got a, not a great team, they can end up winning the Super Bowl against a team that has a very explosive offense such as us, and it seems like they're going to do it. I really didn't want to lose the Super Bowl, especially to a team that is so many overalls below us. I think that is game over. They just converted on fourth down, and we don't win the Super Bowl. So let's just go through to the draft. Hopefully next year is our year. Quite disappointed we didn't win that time. But yeah, let's just jump into the draft and improve the team that way. So the year two draft, I wasn't exactly sure how to improve the team, considering we are very good in pretty much every position. But we did draft a right end in there potentially to replace um, replace Ingram because he is getting old in Madden terms which means he's getting slow and he is becoming absolutely terrible at his position but I did actually see an 84 overall in this draft which is quite nice and some star developments so there are the, there are the the draft classes out there where there are some very good players unfortunately we didn't get them but at least you know they're available the, the draft overall actually seemed very good um, there seems to be a lot of high rated tight ends. Unfortunately we don't need one this time. But they are out there too. And this is the team going into year 3. Offensive line looks great. I mean we could potentially trade for some of them. But I, I think we should just rock with this team. Just because we got to the Super Bowl last year. You know, if it's, you know if it's not broke don't fix it. I think is the best way to look at this. So we'll probably just go forward. Our overall is a little bit higher. We're up to a 91. When I think we were playing the season at an 87 last year. So let's see where we are mid season. I can imagine we're doing pretty well this mid-season, and we're 6-1 and one again. We do have to re-sign Melvin Gordon again, because I didn't give him a full contract last year. I did tag him last year. So, you know, I think he might actually be asking for a bit less, considering he's a bit older. He is asking for a little bit le less. I mean, 30 over 4 is not too bad. We'll up it to 5. We'll lower it a little bit. We'll lower it to 30 over 5. See if he takes that. If he does, fantastic. And he does, which is great. We also have Keenan Allen. Seems like a lot of, um, of re-signings again. But luckily we have huge cap room because um, Philip Rivers, he didn't re-sign with us in free agency. So, I mean, that, that's since we have a rookie quarterback, we can afford to spend all this cap on other players. Like Desmond King, who's up to a 90 overall. You know, overall-wise, the team, it's a Super Bowl team. And I know I say that with pretty much every one of these, but this is definitely a Super Bowl team. Melvin Ingram, he's 31 and he wants a three-year. I'm not going to give him a three-year just because he already regressed three points this year. Next year he'll probably be down to an 84, 80, 83. And he, he doesn't want to take that. So unfortunately we might have to let him go. Mike Williams, I might keep. Here's our number our number three now. Because I think Travis Benjamin left. If I remember correctly in free agency. So he's going to be our, our number three or number four. He's a very good receiver. Uh, Forrest Lamp we're going to keep. And Feeney we're going to keep as well. So we'll re-sign those guys. We'll go to the, uh, the playoff playoff mark hopefully we'll make the playoffs again I'd be very very surprised if we don't 
But um, but yeah, let's sort of sim to there, see what the team's stats are looking like, see what our new quarterback can do with the team, and yeah, let's go. So, going to the end of the year, hopefully we've made playoffs. I'm assuming we did by that, and we did 13-3, and three, our best record yet. The team's performing great. With Without Philip Rivers, unfortunately, but you know, the uh, we'll look at the stats and see what our guy did. Carroll Towns, that is a year. 49 touchdowns, 11 interceptions with 4,700-ish yards. That is, that's an unbelievable year from Carroll Towns. That's potentially MVP worthy. Um, Melvin Gordon does fa fairly well again. Seems like we got a lot more offensive yards this year. Key, uh, Mike Williams actually came in first. 16 touchdowns. That is a ridiculous year. Keenan Allen did very well. Hunter Henry did fantastically. Nearly 900 yards with 10, 10 touchdowns as well. Blocking, we did you know fairly well. That's one of the better years that I've seen with um with sack numbers. And defensively, it also looks like we did very well with a lot of guys getting tackles, a fair amount of tackles for loss, and we actually got our first double-digit sack guy in Joey Bosa there with Melvin Ingram doing fairly well. Let's see the picks. I can see five there from Trevor Williams, two from King and Verrett. That's so our cornerbacks got nine picks between them. That is. That's a great year for that unit. Forced fumbles, a lot of guys with one. Desmond King got one as well, so him, tre well, Trevor Williams got one as well, actually. So potentially, if he got a defensive touchdown, which he did, that could be Defensive Player of the Year if no one else got tons of sacks or tons of tackles. So let's jump in and see. Offensively, we're second. Defensively, we're 13th. I thought we'd be a little bit better than that. I mean, offensively, I did expect us to be up there. And Carroll Towns wins MVP. I mean, he's going to have a lot of upgrade points, or at least I think he should. He also wins, you know, Offensive Player of the Year. We have no other guys in there, I don't think. Nope. I mean, I thought Melvin Gordon might be in there because he had a decent year. Defensive Player of the Year. I'm actually surprised um, it's Reinhardt in there and not Trevor Williams higher up. We did get three players in that list, which is fairly decent. I don't think we have any offensive rookies who have potential to be in there, or defensive rookies, actually. Nope. But, um, I mean, we'll take that. Carroll Towns, I mean, he's got so many awards. I mean, Mike Williams also wins Best Wide Receiver, so he should have a lot of experience. So, this could be the playoff run that gets us the Super Bowl. Let's cross our fingers and hope it is. Um, let's see who we're up against when we sim through a week. So, we'll only have to win three games this time. Hopefully, we can make our field goals. And hopefully, you know, we can make it to the Super Bowl, win one, and count this down as a win for the team. We actually got the Chiefs as our first game going into into the playoffs very hard one they score early on but you know we make it back hopefully carol towns can take his mvp status put his foot on, uh, put his you know stamp on these games and get us a lot of points it seems like he's doing fairly well i mean we did have to settle for some field goals but we're only down by one at this point we do have the ball and we're going to their red zone and we actually make the field goal which is good i think it looked like they had um darius lennon pop up there it might have been someone else but anyway we're up seven points Going into the fourth, they make it an even game. Looks like we're driving down the field slowly. Unfortunately, I'm not exactly sure what happened there. It looked like the ball went straight to their um, their goal line. But I'm going to kick this field goal just because I know from this distance, if it's 50 yards, the CPU is going to miss it. So it's within range of our kicker, who's actually a lefty. Very surprising. You don't really see that very often. But we're going to kick the field goal. I mean, we'll give the... Um, the Chiefs a chance to tie it up but we're gonna kick this field goal hopefully we actually make it and uh I don't end up making an absolute idiot myself we do just about make it was it you know a tough field goal from 50 yards luckily we did get it so hopefully that takes us through to the next round of the playoffs they still do have a chance if they get a return they're gonna go for the big play and I think we got a sack on the final play there so let's move into I think the AFC championship game is gonna be now let's see who we're up against so this game we're against the Jags again. This is sort of the inevitable rivalry that is happening every single year. Us against the Jags for the title of best in our division. And so far, it looks like the Jags are just edging it in a very, very close defensive game so far. We missed the extra point. Hopefully that doesn't end up costing us. If it does, I'm going to be pretty annoyed at that. So we're down 13-8. to eight. Very weird scoreline to have there. We've got safety, it seems like, and we're up by three. You know, we can afford to give them a field goal. Unfortunately, they get a touchdown. Let's see how we do here. They are up by seven. Big play from Mike Williams there by the looks of it, and makes it 23-23. 
I think they actually ended up missing a field goal, or they went for it on fourth. So it seems like we're going to have to kick another field goal, I think it looks like. I mean, I'm going to kick the field goals in the fourth quarter, I think. Before that, you know, if I, I'm not going to kick them if I don't have to. But when it comes to the fourth quarter, I know they're either going to go for it on fourth, something ridiculous, or... You know, we'll, we'll see what happens here. Hopefully, we do end up winning the game. We'll go through. And we do end up winning it. So let's go to the Super Bowl. See who we're up against. I can imagine they're not going to be much lower overall than the Giants. So, it's actually the Giants again. We're in 94 overall. We should absolutely demolish them. But you know how these things go. They went 10-6. and 6. I can't imagine their overall is going to be much higher. Maybe an 82. So, let's get into the game. So, our first Super Bowl. Well, not our first Super Bowl. A Super Bowl appearance against the Giants is actually the second Super Bowl appearance we've had against the Giants in consecutive years. And I'm not sure how they keep getting here, but they seem to be dominating games. I mean, it, they're up 10-2, to two, very bizarre scoreline. We seem to be to love getting safeties, so we must have a great punter who puts them back at the, uh, the goal line, and we just managed to get, you know, sacks from there. But we're up 16 to... 16, 16 to 16 now. Saquon Barkley seems to be popping up, seeming like he's having a fairly decent day. Can we make it a two-possession game? Kick the field goal. I'm going to do this myself, I think. In fact, I'm not sure if I'm going to go for a field. Yeah, I'm going to go for a field goal actually, just to make it a two-possession game. And I kind of quite like kicking with a lefty. It just looks absolutely bizarre. So, hopefully, you know, we're up ten points, eight and a half minutes to go. I just hope we can uh, hang on to the lead here. It looks like the Giants actually pushed downfield absolutely instantly. Third down. We do manage to get it. We're running out the clock a little bit. Ten points. And there's 40 seconds. We do actually get the onside kick. And that should be the Super Bowl. And it is. So we win the Super Bowl. 33-30. to 30. I think I'm going to call it a, um, a rebuild there. Just because I think end on a high. I mean, the only thing we can do better is win it two years in a row we did get to the Super Bowl two years in a row so we're going to be celebrating there I think um, Philip Rivers might, might have actually got him back on the roster signed him as a free agent so we might see him lifting the Lombardi trophy but I'm, like I said I'm going to call it a rebuild there guys hopefully you have enjoyed it if you have drop a like on the video subscribe to the channel if you've made it this far into the video there'll be a lot of rebuilds coming soon and a lot of other ones I've done recently I'm going to be working my way through the whole 32 teams team did fantastically I mean, I'm just happy to win one. So, hope, as I said, hopefully you guys did enjoy it, but I'm going to call it there.